Hello again everyone, my name is Melissa Downs from Nine News. Welcome back to Stuart Home. We are in the boarding school which is known as the heart of the school. With me is the Dean of Boarding, Karen Davies. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for being here today. The boarding house does make Stuart Home unique. Absolutely. Yes. I think it's a lovely blend of rural and remote girls coming into the big city, actually aspiring to have all of their dreams come true, yes. and we're just part of that springboard to making that come true. And Stuart Hunt being the only Catholic school with a boarding school. Most important for us is that we are actually still celebrating our faith and really wanting to you know, encourage the girls in their journey with God and themselves as a Catholic young people. And just tell me the nuts and bolts of boarding school life. How many girls? How does it all work? Well, for us, we're very fortunate. I think at the moment with our 100 girls, it's just magnificent because we really can get to know every girl as an individual. No girl is left alone. We actually are accompanying them all the time yes. in both their academic endeavours and also their lived experience here in the house. It's interesting. I'm very well supported. I have a wonderful team working with me. Um, I have a deputy dean of boarding, Jane Morris, two assistant heads of boarding, Melissa and Ellen. And the four of us are a tight group that really want to be able to provide the best for our girls here. It, but they're also supported by another team of people, you know, those people that come in and do our shift work with us and are available at any time, you know, so we try and supervise the girls and care for the girls 24-7. And actually when I was talking to some of the girls earlier, which you had mentioned as well, there are kind of two tiers of of carers in the boarding school in that you've got that kind of admin level but then you've got those more motherly figures that are uh, play a different role. Oh, absolutely. The girls need to know that they're cared for and genuinely loved. Um, I think it's one of our most remarkable statements from Madeline Sophie is that come and you will be cared for with great love. And so I know our boarding supervisors, if they see a young person who's gone to sleep and the blanket has slipped, that they'll pick that up and put that over that girl so that she's going to be warm and cosy to get a decent night's sleep. Um, I've got mums, I've got university students, I've got women in their you know, middle 30s and 40s. So it's an eclectic group, but it's a group that actually works so well for our girls because all our girls can then individually connect to somebody yes. who has meaning yes. for them. Yes. So while we're a collective and we all work hard to support each other, we know girls will develop a relationship with individuals because they, they need that as well. And how beautiful, you can't help but notice the view here. Oh, stunning. Uh, out just about every window, but having this amount of land, the, the trees, the nature, I mean that must be uh, a nice environment, especially for the country girls who come. Certainly Melissa, the nature of having access to a view of the city which you can almost just touch, but to be actually protected and up on the mountain and be able to have the bushland. For our girls who are country girls, they yeah. need to know that there's space and that they can exist in a bigger environment, but when they want to and when they're ready and how we support them, they can actually touch that real city life as well. Now, this is one of the common rooms, so it's kind of like a living room, I suppose. Yes. yes. And I, I, we were having a giggle before because last time we were here doing our run-through, it looked much more lived in. It's very tidy today. Well, yes, we were on our best behaviour today because we want to really showcase what the beauty of our space. Yes. And so the girls are very fortunate. They both well, have let's, this. Let's see some of the space, yes. Well, we've got this space as yes. one of our common room spaces. Yes. So we have another area called the nest, yes. which is where the girls will come up at the end of the day at 3 p.m. for their afternoon tea. It's where all our staff on the shift will be touching base with them, yes. just to ensure that the girls had a really good day at school or if yes. there's anything that's unsettled them that they can actually respond to immediately. Yes. Um, and then for our weekend space and every afternoon space, we've got this lovely area along it's here beautiful. and upstairs is another area where we have another long balcony as yes. well so the girls have got plenty of space to have a separate space but a togetherness as yes. well and now we can't show everything today but i did no. see the beautiful uh, bathrooms the renovated bathrooms so there's some works have been done but there are more facilities being upgraded Absolutely. all the time. So we have a very comprehensive plan in play. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're very proud of our space and very happy and I know our alum who have been boarders have yes. also been very happy and the girls feel comfortable and secure in some spaces that are very similar to what their mums had experienced. Mm. But we have got this comprehensive plan and I'm very excited that you know I'm hoping by this come Christmas we'll be able to really renovate a whole section of the house and yes. then the following Christmas do another. Obviously renovations take a long time and even yes. though you might plan for for, say five weeks it ends up taking eight so it's a bit of a trick but one of the things you were saying some of the older dorms are actually the ones the girls love the most 
Well, they're comfortable because yes. they've made it their own home. So yeah. I am sorry we can't show you that today, but you know, some of the little spaces are just beautiful mm. for the girls. And the girls really individualise them, so it becomes their space with their dunas and their, their covers and their photos yes. and the way in which they want to live and have it there nice. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. All right, well, now let's head in. Now, this is... Uh, is this a special area for the grade 12s? Yes, so yes. year 12s, we really are trying to encourage our year 12s in that, you know, the um, movement towards young adulthood and yes. where they're going to be much more independent. So yes. the girls are very fortunate to have a common room space where they can make their own breakfast each day, yes. they can cook up their own sort of evening meal as well and... Um, and they also get access to laundry facilities for themselves. I know, I heard that. You girls do your own washing. Isn't that impressive? <laughs> it's not one thing I'd like to do. I'd like a laundry mat, but anyway, the girls really, I really enjoy yes. having that opportunity. Okay, so will you reintroduce me to the girls here today? I'd be delighted. Okay. So we have Lily. Yes. We have May. Yes. We have Emma. Yes. And we have Lucy. Wonderful. These girls mm. are what we call our house captains and vice captains, yes. and they really lead our school in and boarding in a tone and a development of what we want for our girls. So they're, they're crucial to us in our family development. I suppose they're an example of our big sister and little sister program yes. that we try to yes. mentor the girls. Um, and they know, they each run a house each uh, as a pair and uh, a wonderful opportunity for inter-house activities with our Anzac Day Cup coming up very soon. Right. But I'll let the girls tell you, you more about Thank that. Thank you, Karen. Lovely to have chatted with Thank you today. You. Well, we might jump into that as, as Karen was talking about the big sister, little sister mentor role because now who was grade seven? You started grade seven? Uh, myself and Maeve started in grade okay. seven. Okay. And so now that you're in grade 12 and being a big sister, do you remember what it was like when you were young and, and having those big sister roles, how important is that in a boarding house? Um, it was great in Year 7 because like the mentors got us together with the Year 8s all the time who'd be, like, been there for a year but weren't too far away in age. And so we just even just chatting with them and then the Year 2, Year 12 mentors just to make a connection was so much fun. And now you see it on the other side and you see like how worthwhile it was for you so you're really trying to make it, the effort for the younger girls. And do you still ever keep in touch with the girls who have already, who have you got? Come, come a little bit closer to the mic for me, yeah, thank you. Um, so my big sister, we're actually really close, yes. um, like family friends as well. So carrying on from the buddy system in the day school, they normally pair boarders and boarders together, which is really helpful. So when you're homesick, you can just go to them as well, yeah. um, which is really nice. And we spent a lot of time with them and they were always a person to go to when you're upset or anything like and that. And I guess as well as your other... <laughs> other students you know there's also the staff who, who look after you and yeah. the, the kind of the motherly figures who are here to, yeah. to help you. So there's you. like a couple like tier students obviously like Mrs Davies who's our head of boarding and but there's also just like our general supervisors who are like what I would say are our motherly figures and they're the ones who are like in the boarding house all the time with us and take us on rec and just like little things like roll and just sit down and have a conversation with you and really easy to make a connection with them it's such like a diverse range of supervisors so everyone connects with different groups of people different, differently mm. and so there's someone for everyone I suppose. Yeah. So now you girls came along in grade 10, yes. um, how was that settling in as a slightly older student? Well I came from a reasonably small town so coming into the city it was very nice and just having that connection with the year 12s they were very welcoming, mm. very like if you need anything come to my room, this is my room. Um, anything, any hour, they were always there to support us, which was really nice. Yeah. yeah. And I sort of started not knowing anyone, but yes. we were really fortunate in our grade in Year 10. There was a lot of new girls came in, like there was maybe 14. Right. Um, so that was really lovely, and so we had all of those girls who were experiencing the exact same thing, like even the Grade Sevens who were new, like were going through the same thing. and. Yeah, and then all the girls that were already here were really lovely. We were all given buddies in our year as well, yes. so not like a big sister, little sister kind of arrangement, but just, you know, like one of these girls who's been here for a while. And how, what is it like day to day being a boarder? How does it, how does it work? You, now that you're in grade 12, you do get to cook your own meals and, and do that sort of thing, but, and your own washing. You all do your own washing? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. do. Bravo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I think my, like most of us come in here every morning and make breakfast, like yeah. some earlier than others if we have sport, but... Um, it's really nice to have it in Year 12, just, you know, it's really grounding, I think, for all of us to sort of do, you know, make your breakfast, sit down with everyone um, before you start the school day. Like, yes. it's a really beautiful 
way to start your day. I couldn't help but notice, and I would love the camera to, how, how many tins of Milo are there? It's our tradition. The, the, Milo is a tradition. Year, at the end of the year. I remember years ago, in one of the first yearbooks we got, mm. One of the boarders put in a quiz there and all the questions, if you'd make a good boarder or not. And one of the questions was, what's your Milo to milk ratio? And if it's more Milo than milk, you'd make a great boarder. But at the end of the year on our final night, we, they're all empty. Like, okay, they're okay. All so stored. that's what you've already used this year. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and, and they um, stack them all up. And yes. on our very last night, one of the year 12s will... Knock, like knock it over and that's like our, okay, we're done now, yeah. our boarding thing. So that's why it looks like we've got so many. <laughs> so, I mean, I can tell just from talking to the four of you, there's a lovely rapport between you. Do you think that extends throughout the boarding school? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think having like our dorms mixed in, so like as much as you're in with your grade, yes. we're all in the one boarding house with every grade. And so that connection is like between you and your grade, but it's also some of my best friends have graduated or in the grade below me. Yeah. And that is solely because of boarding and the way that the boarding house is. So like it's, like, it's like a family. Do you feel yeah. like sisters? It's a, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Definitely. And you, you were telling me the other day about that, um, recently you sort of got a bit, felt a bit overwhelmed for well, the day yeah. and your, your roomie kind of came to the rescue. Yeah, well, it's like, even though, like, we're not, you're not best friends with everyone, obviously, but you form that connection in boarding where you're with each other enough, you can tell if something's off and they're just able to go, like, Lil, you okay? Like, can I get someone for you? Like, can I do this for you? And even if they know that they may not be the right person for you to talk to, they were there to double check and can help you make a connection with someone else kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. All right, let's go out and have a look at this view, this balcony here, because... Um, it, it's, it's beautiful. Um, so aside from, you know, here in the boarding house, what, what are the activities, what are the things that you get to do, I don't know, every afternoon? How do you, how do you spend the afternoon? Um, most afternoons, like, we have study through the week and then yes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have a really awesome rec program. So there's normally, like, I think this Friday they went and watched the Broncos game oh, in at Suncorp. Yes. Um, a couple of weekends ago we went to Wet n Wild. What else have we done? What's like, the lockout program? I heard that mentioned. What's oh, yeah, that's... Um, yes. So the lockout program is a new thing we started this yes. year. And we do it every Thursday afternoon. Um, after study at 5.30, mm. everyone gets pushed out of the boarding house. The boarding house is closed for everyone. And we all go to the Oval and you can play games with everyone. Yes. Um, we normally play, like, beach volleyball, touch, soccer. Um, and and then, how does that help? What, what's the... Well, everyone just gets along. We were going to do like Amiens and Grenoble games, which are our two houses in yes. the boarding house. But we, once everyone got down there on the first day, we all just mixed in together yeah. and it all just worked out itself. People can yeah. get rid of whatever stresses or yeah. tensions they're and worrying about. Yeah, and everyone just blends, like the whole, all the grades just intertwine yeah. together yeah. really nicely. So. What's your favourite thing about boarding? My favourite thing about boarding would be like being able to spend time with my friends like 24-7. It's like a big sleepover where you're with your friends who love you, will support you with everything, through everything. And I think that's like one of the key things about boarding is that you're going to have that support there and you're going to make friends for life no matter what you do or yeah. where you go. These girls are always going to be there for you. Um, yeah. And what about the food? I have to ask. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty yeah, good. It's, it's obviously good. not no home cooked meal, but I think it does pretty well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So now uh, to kind of wind up, what would you say to families at home who are maybe they're coming here today, they're watching from home? Why do you think Stuart Home would be the right the right place for their daughter? The boarding school specifically. The boarding school. I think like for anyone that comes, it doesn't matter what grade you're in. Like it is hard, and it is. You know, you go through your ups and downs with it, but Stuart Home just really fosters that, you know, like sense of community. And like all the girls you walk past, I remember when I started in grade 10, nearly everyone I walked past in the hallways, regardless of their age, just at least smiled as you walked past mm. and said hello, even though they didn't know my name, they had no idea who I was, but they all really made an effort over the first term, first couple of months to get to know mm. everyone. And because it is actually quite a small boarding house, it makes it quite easy. Yes, you get to know everyone. What yeah. would you say? Yeah, that's the same. I think just making those connections and everyone always, if you're looking down, a girl will say hello and, you know, you get that little smile and you go, okay, you know, it hasn't been the best day, but someone's just said this to me, like, Makes thank you, you know, better. everyone's just a big, like, family. We mm. support each other. It's, like, 
nice sisterhood. It's a good sisterhood yeah. that we... That is yeah. wonderful. Girls, thank you so much for your time today. We are going to have to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed your tour of the boarding school. And of course, if you want any more information about Stu at Home, please contact the school and I know they'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you for your time today.